Hello and welcome to BBC World News. We start with our breaking news from Afghanistan where 54 people are now known to have died in a huge suicide car bombing. Health officials say almost 350 people are wounded. Well, the blast happened close to the German embassy in the diplomatic quarter near the presidential palace. It's not clear at this stage where the German embassy staff are amongst the casualties. The nearby French embassy was also damaged. The explosion came during the morning rush hour. Well, on the line now is our correspondent, Harun Naji Safdada. Uh, Harun, just tell us what you know at the moment. We have now been told that over 80 people have been killed and hundreds of others have been wounded. They are being brought to hospitals across the city in the capital, Kabul. I just came from the city centre where I saw a chaotic scene. A total morning, hundreds of people were gathered behind the gates of hospitals trying to find out about their relatives who have uh, been injured, wounded in, in the hospital. And it was not very far from the presidential palace, uh, walking distance to presidential palace, very strategic location, close to, as you say, German, French and Indian embassies. And we've seen some of the images coming back with, with people being taken to hospitals in the back of cars and vans as well as the emergency services. Exactly. Uh, I saw several people being put into the trunk of police rangers, some into uh, makeshift uh, ambulances uh, and some in private, pr private cars. Uh, being taken to uh, hospitals. Uh, we also understand that many hospitals in Kabul are trying to cope with the large number of patients they are receiving. You know, uh, this is the deadliest, the most horrible attack in years in the Afghan capital, Kabul. And you know what? Nobody has taken responsibility for it at this stage. That's probably because uh, the bulk of uh, a large number of uh, casualties are civilians. Uh, is there any information at all as to who is behind this yet? Not exactly. No group, uh, neither the Taliban nor IS, has taken responsibility at this stage. But both insurgent groups uh, have increased their attacks across Afghanistan. And the Taliban announcing their spring offensive just last month. And IS uh, is being behind several deadly attacks across the country. But I think we have to wait and see who was behind this and who has this capacity to carry out complex attacks behind fortified uh, buildings and in a tanker full of explosive. Can you just tell me a bit more about the area that this blast happened? How busy was it at this time? It was quite busy. It was during rush hour. Everybody was on their way to offices, to their workplace. Uh, that the attack took place. Uh, the area that it has hit is called Zanbak Square. That's well known to Afghan capital people because uh, that's the main, that's the heart of uh, the strategic location where uh, the green area of Kabul is, where the presidential palace is located and where the uh, CEO office is. And if you need to go from one location in Kabul to another, you might get past most probably from this area. And so it is presumably supposed to be pretty secure. Absolutely. There are tall walls, about three metres or so, very fortified, uh, heavily uh, protected. But in spite of that, many questions are being asked that how a lorry or a water tanker has made its way into it. Thank you so much for that update. Harun, we'll be back to you, of course, uh, in the coming moments. But we first of all want to speak now to Faroz Bashari, who is media spokesman for the Afghan government. Thank you very much for joining us. Can you tell us what information you now have on this blast? Uh, thank you, Jetty. Uh, today, the enemies of Afghanistan once again showed their brutality by killing and wounding uh, dozens of civilians. Uh, they do not abide by any rules. They have uh, killed 49 people and so far 320 wounded. Uh, the numbers are changing. This is the number we've got from our Ministry of uh, Public Health. 
Okay, you, you're saying how many 49 killed as far as you know? We, we've had a higher figure than that, but I know obviously the information is changing all the time. The, the numbers are changing because we are still in the stages of investigation, but the current number is 49 killed and 320 wounded. Right. Can you just tell us, do you have any information as to who was behind this attack? Uh, so far, we don't know, but we clearly know that this was a terrorist act, an act by the enemies of Afghanistan who intentionally target civilians. They have done this uh, in Ramadan, in the first day of Ramadan, in Khost province. They have killed and wounded 19 civilians, uh, and this is a brutal act. The enemy has no mercy on civilians and they do not abide by any rules. And, and you've had no information as yet as to who is responsible? Uh, so far, we have no uh, information. We are really saddened by this incident. We share our condolences with the families of those uh, who lost their dear ones, and we, we pray and act for the quick recovery of the wounded people. Uh, people are asking already, of course, how uh, any attacker could get into this part of Kabul because it was supposed to be secure. It is a, a key strategic area with foreign embassies close to the presidential palace. Uh, we are doing everything to, to secure our people and to provide security for them across the uh, We are investigating. We have assigned uh, teams to investigate the incident. So we are very, it's very early to talk about uh, this. Uh, absolutely, I, I understand that, and it is very distressing, of course, to see civilians injured. Um, can I just ask you on, on a broader point? You know, people will say, what more can the government or other nations do to try and support uh, a peaceful future for Afghanistan? Because people there, innocent people there, have suffered so much. Well, uh, our lines are clear that terrorists are the enemies of uh, every nation, uh, whether it's our region where we live or with the international community. We ask everyone to, to support us and to fight, uh, to take a real fight against terrorists. Do you, you don't do you... have bad and get terrorists. They're do... all bad terrorists and you have to fight them. Do, do you, uh, and we are doing this. Are you worried about specific to, nations' involvement at the moment? Well, uh, this is a general call. We want all to help us fight uh, this brutal enemy. Uh, we believe that a stable Afghanistan is in the interest of uh, everyone. So should, should the international my, troops... Our spokesperson. Should, should the international Let troops... Let me give you some... Have, have, have they left too early? Should, do you need more international support again now on a military front? Well, we do need support, especially in training and advising and equipping our national uh, security and defence forces. Uh, the strong force is getting stronger. We are fighting the enemy uh, seriously. Uh, just I'll give you short information about what we have done in the 24 hours. Uh, according to the information from our Minister of Defense, uh, in the past 24 hours, our Afghan National Army has conducted 17 planned operations. Uh, our commanders have conducted 13 operations against the enemies. We had two night raids. In these operations, we have killed 35 enemies, uh, militants, 24 of them wounded. Six of Daesh are killed. We are uh, fighting them very seriously, and we are committed for a democratic uh, Afghanistan, and no one can stop us. How much are you worried about the Taliban, and how much are you worried about IS now? Well, uh, uh, there is a threat, and we are facing threats from both and we are fighting them uh, seriously.
Okay, Faroz Bashari, a media spokesman for the Afghan government. Many thanks indeed for taking the time to speak to us here on the BBC. Thank you. Now, let's move on to other news.